Brenda G. Knight was last seen in Richmond, November of 2000. It was the week of Thanksgiving. Her remains were discovered in the Manapanai River about seven months later. The person who dumped her body there was likely to have some knowledge of that, that location. And she didn't deserve for her body just to be thrown away like it's trash. I am the daughter of Brenda Michelle G. Knight. She was well known, she was a good person. That hurts a lot to know that my mom wasn't there for the birth of any of my kids. Graduating from high school, namely all the big accomplishments that I did, she wasn't there. She's not forgotten, I'm going to figure it out. Um, I figured out who she was when she was a Jane Doe, um, and I'm going to figure out who killed her. Brenda G. Knight, missing November of 2000. It was the week of Thanksgiving. We actually stumbled upon this case while working on the Keisha Jacobs missing person case. This is my grandmama house and this is the house that I was born and raised up in. Brenda's sister approached us and asked us to do a reopen the case on Brenda G. Me and my sister were only like four years apart. Um, we, as siblings, we always argued, but we always had each other back. Brenda G at the time of her disappearance was 34 years old. She was a mother of three children. Uh, she did hair, and she was very popular in the community. She was well known. Wonderful with hair. I mean, she traveled, she's been in um, hair shows. She's won like third place, 13 places. I mean, she's been all over London and stuff. And, you know, at times people do go through things in their life that changes their course, and that will happen with my sister. The last day that she was seen, she was dropped off um, by her sister on Jefferson Davis Highway. She's supposed to have been going to a friend's house. She was found seven months later, uh, her remains entangled in debris in the Mattapanai River. Diamond did get the ball rolling in this investigation. She, uh, she did not sit around waiting for answers. This is the first flyer that I um, printed off of my mom when I was searching for her. Um, the end of 2011, beginning of 2012. She went to the state police. She offered up her DNA, and that eventually is how they got the hit for her mom's bones, is that her mom's bones had been found seven months after she disappeared, but they no one knew who she was. For over a decade, uh, Brenda G was known as the Mattapanai River Lady. So they had to send those bones to the Smithsonian, to other places up in D.C., the FBI facility in D.C. And there were some issues with that. Um, of course, we didn't know, so they were sent to the Smithsonian, and the date range they gave was uh, about five years, as they believed the bones had been in the water. So when the press releases were done initially, it said, you know, they've been missing about five years. And Diamond told me that her mom said, well, it can't be Brenda. One, she would have never gone that far from home, all the way out to King and Queen County. And two, it didn't fit the time frame when the family had last seen her, which was the day before Thanksgiving in 2000. I, I guess what's unusual about this case, and it really speaks to just how sad things were at that time, is that she disappeared and mom didn't report her missing until 2004, that's four years later. I mean, that kind of shows what kind of lifestyle that mom believed Brenda was living. Brenda had developed a um, cocaine habit and was doing some, some sex work, mostly for people she knew to obtain money for that cocaine. But by all accounts of our interviews, she didn't typically just jump in cars with strangers. Thanks for the beautiful cars. They made my evening complete. I went to sleep with a smile on my face. The second car was a sweet surprise and even more greatly appreciated than the first. First of all, I'm not much of a writer, but I guess I could bend the rules a little so I choose. I am here, of course, for breaking the rules of the honorable judge, not completing the rock program. I'm 33 years old with three girls that look just like me. I was a stylist for 13 years, it's been three years of ups and downs. I know it's time for ups. We're at um, the Mattapanai River um, in King and Queen County. Um, 
this is where my mom's body was found um, 22 years ago, Balcanuis, right over here um, to the left side and it stuck in the beavers down. Um, skeleton remained fully dressed when the canoeist found her. And somebody just brought her um, all the way out here, an hour away from where she went missing and just dumped her body in the water. Um, this is my first time out here and it's pretty hard, it's, it's rough. Um, it's been almost 10 years since I know this is where she was found at and I couldn't muster up the courage to come out, out here. This is Route 628 in King and Queen. What do you guys think? Do they drag her down the bank or do they just toss her over, you think? Um, it's our opinion that if this is where she was put into the, the river, that she was likely, with the least expenditure of energy by the person who dumped her, would likely have just tossed her over the side of the bridge into the water. But it's documented that there had been several flooding events that had occurred um, in the recent months leading up to the discovery. We do have a belief that the person who dumped the body probably had some knowledge of that roadway in that area. And the very last time I saw my daughter was when I went to the funeral home and I had to look at her skeleton remains. So. And it was hard because you just had her in a plastic bag, all her bones. They weren't a symbol of anything, so. So that stays in my mind. Yeah. That's that's, the way it was supposed to happen. No. So that's the very last thing I remember my, my daughter seeing her remains. One thing that struck me about this case is, and really hit me in the heart, is watching Diamond, her daughter, back out at the scene, staring upriver at the curve where her mom was entangled in a dam. And it's just something I'll never forget. She was trembling, she was, uh, she was shaking with, uh, and, and crying and emotional. Whoever did this, come forward. If you know who did this, please just give us some more closure. My mom deserves it, my family deserve it, I deserve it. She didn't deserve just the, she didn't deserve to die. And she didn't deserve for her body just to be thrown away like it's trash and just disposed of in a, in a river. We're almost 20 years later and it's wearing on her. And she wants answers to this case and hopefully we're able to help her.